Hello everyone, welcome to lesson 21 of C Programming on the Mac. In this tutorial, we're going to be covering tons of things, and because we're covering so many things, it's actually going to be a two-part tutorial, and uh, it's actually just going to be lesson 21 and then lesson 22, because I don't want to put part 1 and part 2, that just looks dumb. So, lesson 21, lesson 22, they're going to be a little combined lesson here. But anyway, let's get started since these are so long. So, um, in this tutorial, it's going to be about the function fgets, which stands for file get string, which works well for input on text strings. So it's like our scanf function that we learned about, but instead it's good for text strings. And I'll show you why it's good, obviously. That's why I'm going to teach it to you. So, um, and then also we're going to be deep diving into how text strings work in C. I think I've said this like for four, three or four tutorials now, but I really mean that in this tutorial you're going to learn how C analyzes text strings, how it really knows how text strings work, or how it sees text strings. So anyway, that's uh, basically an overview of the next two tutorials, I guess. Um, so anyway, um, to start out, we want to make a character array that holds 10 characters. So um, should I create a character array that holds 10 characters? Um, no, actually, I'm going to create a character array that holds 11 total elements. And this will hold my 10 characters, but then I need that extra byte or that extra element for something at the end. And you'll see why that is um, later in this tutorial. So um, I'm going to start out with a pound define. To, it's going to signify our maximum, uh, the maximum value that um, are, are the number of elements that we're going to have in our array. So um, my max, just call it my max, and we're going to give it a value of 11 because that's the value we want for the number of elements that we want in our array. So now we're going to create a character array, and for lack of a better name, we're going to call it my array. And we're going to just throw in my max, oops, not my, my array, my max. And so now, when the program runs, just a brief review of <coughs> sorry how pound define works. My max um, before the program runs, it substitutes in the eleven everywhere it sees my max in the program. So then, when the program goes to run, it reads it as character my array with eleven elements. So that's how that works. <coughs> so now I'm gonna split off from the tutorial bit to explain how text strings work in detail, and to guide us through this comes our handy dandy crappy looking graphic. And basically in this um, this graphic represents our exact text string that we have below. So here we have a text string of 11 elements and in this um, this graphic here shows 11 bytes in total. Same thing. 11 elements, 11 bytes. It's for for right now it's the same thing. Anyway, so 11 elements in our array and um, so here these, these first, from 0 to 9, those are the 10 characters that I was talking about. We have 10 total characters that we want, but then we added this extra byte at the end to hold this magical character at the end, and I'll get into that in a second. But anyway, the first, as you can see, we created an array of 11 total elements, and the first 10 hold our uh, characters. And as you can see, my name is, and spaces count as characters too. Um, they are in the uh, the ASCII uh, character codes. They have a numerical value, and they are included. So a space, one space, is one character in um, in jumpins in text strings. So uh, yeah, obviously normal characters like normal letters count as characters, and spaces count as characters as well. So as you can see, with our first part here, we have a total of 10 characters. Now in this last and final byte that we added on, um, we have this weird looking character, which actually st stands for the null character, or the zero in um, the character codes. It has a value of zero. And basically, what, what how text strings work is when the computer is looking for the end of the string, it's looking for this zero value, or the null character. It's looking for the zero value, and when it finds it, it knows that that is the end of the text string. And that's pretty much how text strings work. Um, so yeah, once again, we created a text string of total of 11 
elements. The first 10 can carry our characters, and then the last one is going to hold this extra byte so that we can uh, put in this zero value so that we can basically show the program that this is the end of our array. Okay, so this is a very important concept, and um, yeah, so basically if you if you want to if you want an array of 30 elements, just tack on an extra element, make it 31 to hold this extra byte inside of it, and that extra byte will hold your zero or the val your zero value or your null character. Okay, that's how text strings work. So now moving on to our program, um, our program is going to ask for the person's first name. So we're just going to use a printf and we're going to say, please enter your first name. And a nice little semicolon, or sorry, colon. I'm an idiot. That is a colon. That is a colon. Yes. And um, so, yeah, that's it's just a prompt to the user saying, please enter your first name. And then we're just going to enter our first name. So now our fgets function comes in. And this is what fgets looks like. Um, that's how it's spelled right there. fgets looks for a pointer character. And it's pointing to, like we learned in scanf, it's pointing to the address of the zeroth element in the array. Okay, that's what this character pointer is pointing to. It's pointing to the zeroth element in the array. The next part is the number of elements in the array, which is your my max right here. It's 11, 11 elements long. And then this last part is, um, well, I'll get into that. It's not, uh, it's not too important right now. So anyway, um, to start out, again, to point to our zeroth element, the array, we can use the ampersand, and then we can just say my array zero or element zero, but that is a little bit longer, and there's a simplified way, but this just shows you how it works. It's the address of operator, so the address of my array zero, and that's what the pointer is pointing to. It's pointing to the address of my array. So now, but there's a simplified way of doing this exact same thing, and it's just by typing my array. When in pointer form, this is representative of the thing that I just had. It means the exact same thing, the address of the zero, zeroth element. So now, um, moving on to our int here, um, this, is, this is our maximum number, or sorry, the number of elements that we're going to have in our array. So we can just type in my max, and that'll substitute in the 11, so it's equal to whatever our character array is here. And then this file thing at the end, don't worry too much about it. All you are going to enter for now is standard input, which basically means it's taking input from the console. That's all you really have to know for now. So uh, to end this, we're going to do one of those dinky things that, uh, I don't know, I think every website does this. You know when you enter your name and then they say, welcome, you know, your name? It's like, yeah, I just entered my name. Thanks for, you know, taking my name and then reprinting it on the screen. I'm glad I'm glad you can do that. You know, it's, it's kind of corny. But anyway, we're going to do that exact corny thing here. So format specifier of string, and then we're just going to throw in our array. So now it's going to print out the array, or our, 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 basically our text string now, character array, and it's going to say welcome name, or whatever your name is. So let's build and run this. Let's go to the console, and um, as you can see, please enter your first name, and then right after that, it's looking for you to enter your name. So we can just type in my name, press return, and then it'll just say welcome, and then it'll enter uh, this printf here. And yeah, that's how it works. So um, we're going to be covering a lot more on fgets in the next tutorial. But if you have any questions on basically text strings, um, please leave them please leave your questions in the comments of this tutorial, and I'll try to cover those um, with you either in comments or I'll send you a message back. Anyway, this is our slight intro to fgets and a detailed explanation of how strings work. All right, see you in the next tutorial.